So what do you think you've got? I realize it's really early, but uh, obviously with not Allen and Randall, but beyond those guys, I mean, obviously Malik and Juwan played a bit, and you got a bunch of rookies. What do you think you might have below those top two? Yeah, I feel really good about the direction of the room um, from a competitive standpoint and, and just buying into what we're looking for. Uh, uh, right now I've seen, you know, Malik, you know, and Juwan and Amari who look – night and day compared to they did last year. And I think it's all the way they worked in the off season, the way they understand the playbook and the way they're just flying around out there. It's a totally different speed. Um, so I feel really good about them right now. Like you said, you know, we have Allen and, uh, you know, Randall who have already kind of, you know, proven it in our system. But these other three guys are competing and, and they're working, man. Like you see them out there on the field. They're, they're grinding, they're buying in, and they're understanding the playbook. So that's been great. And then, uh, you know, we added the, you know, rookie class of four guys. So that's been fun to work with. And uh, just seeing these young guys come in and get this opportunity in this building, you know, and um, they've just been competing and working. So it's been enjoyable. Jason, last time we talked to you, you went out of your way to mention when you worked with Sammy Watkins as a rookie. Did you know something that we didn't know <laughs> that you guys were going to sign him? <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, what's funny is, you know, he's been a free agent a couple of times now. So I've wrote up Sammy for the reports, you know, with Goody and those guys and told him, I'm like, I've been with Sammy. I know how he can catch. I know how strong he is. A lot of the good things he can do, you know, I said I was with him for that time. But that day, no, I didn't. It was literally within like 36 hours where then they talked to me and they're like, you know, they were like, Braves, you know, you've been with him. And they knew that I liked him before because when they saw my write-ups on him and free agency. And um, they said, he's coming in for dinner. And so I called him right away and I said, hey, you didn't even like call me. He's like, no, it just got booked like right now. So we went out to dinner, you know, we, we broke some bread. We got to talk, catch up, you know, hear about his three kids and, you know, just good old times, you know, and just see where he's been and his maturity has is, is just been exceptional. Um, you know, he was just a young rookie before and now he's a grown man with a family and just living life the right way and, you know, trying to do as much as he can to get back and get another Lombardi, which he's one of the few guys, you know, that has held one up, you know, that I've been around. So that's kind of his goal. And uh, like I said, Sam, he's just smiling. He's happy to be in a building, you know, where he feels a good fit right now. So I did not know, but I'm fired up he's here. What do you think he still has left on the field? Yeah, I mean, I see, I talked to Sam about it the other day. I said, I mean, the way that he, he was running some routes and catching, it reminded me of him when he first walked onto the field. So, um, you know, I mean, the biggest thing with him had been some injuries if you looked at the thing. But, you know, he knows he's going to work as hard as he can. He's here doing all the workouts right now and conditioning. Um, feels good where his body's at. Um, one thing you'll see with him is he plucks the ball different. I mean, he has hands that are like, I mean, you'll hear the pluck and, and running through catch and his play strength. Um, there's a reason why, you know, we draft him that high and he's had a lot of, I'd say, successful years, you know, um, in his career. Um, that Kansas City, you know, Super Bowl run was him in the playoffs when they were doubling Tyreek. He had a one-on-one. -on -one. He was winning those, you know, when you watch the tape. So I'm fired up about him. Um, he's learning the playbook. And he said to me, man, it's different. I've been in four systems the last four years. So he's like just getting back to what you coach and what, you know, he's like Braves, you know, it's been fun hearing you coach the same stuff then as now. And I, he knows the details. So he's, um, you know, he's in a good place right now. And I'm really excited about him. Jason, with the Bill Walsh uh, fellowship program, I think Noah is here this week or sometime around here with yeah. you. I'm just curious what that's been like working with him and just having that, you know, familiarity with Christian, mm -hmm. if you ever had a situation like that before. Yeah, I mean, I told him, I actually said, let's get a picture of you guys and let's put it up on NDSU's website because this is like awesome, man. You know, they're sitting in the room together. Um, I actually knew Noah um, through my college coach. I met him a couple years ago um, and saw him kind of climb the ranks from Minnesota Duluth to North Dakota State. Um, he's a young, intelligent guy who works hard, um, passionate. And, um, you know, you could see the way Christian played in college and why they won a lot of games. They're coached well there. So, um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for him to be around Christian and um, be in the building and try to learn about what goes on in the NFL system and what we kind of demand of the lower level guys that are entry level. Um, and he's just getting, we're putting him to work. It's not like he's just sitting there. He's working and learning. And, um, you know, I, I think um, he's excited about this opportunity. And uh, like I said, I, I laughed because I said, I mean, who would have ever thought, you know, in your head, you're both in a building together at this time. And, you know, uh, I said to Christian, two more weeks of dealing with this dude, you know. <laughs> so Christian kind of smiled. He said, nah, I love him, man. That's my guy, you know. So, you know, it's a, it's a cool experience, I think, for both those guys right now. Could you kind of sense the dynamic between them a little bit? Because, I mean, from what it sounds like, they were pretty tight. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think anytime you you're with a coach for more than one year, right? Once you kind of hit year two, there's a growth and a trust that kind of occurs, you know? Um, I think like anything, you know, I'm demanding a lot from a player, 
So oftentimes those guys, you know, they're like, oh, man, this, you know, rape is always on me. It's every day. I feel like I'm just getting crushed and worked. But then they start to realize they get better. Their performance gets better. They know that you're in their corner. They feel that from you. And then in the long run, you know, then they get to see your family and kids and you just start a connection. And um, and they have that over what the last three, four years, you know, um, and uh, before that, there was Darius Shepard, right, who came from there. So we've had two NDSU guys who are both intelligent, hardworking dudes. And that's what I think when we studied Christian, when he came on the visit, we knew we were getting at him. With the, with the, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I have to say, I mean, do you see him as a wide receiver one or more as like that older boys that can kind of lead someone else into that role? Yeah, I see everyone as wide receiver one, and, and that's just our mentality of our room. And I, just like I said, when we had to play, you know, the Cardinals and every guy was out, every guy's now the number one. And, and to me, it doesn't matter who's up. It's your job out there, you know, to go out there with confidence and say to ourselves, I don't, you know, I'm now I'm in this role. So if Sammy's out there and earns the starting spot, that he's our number one, you know, and he's going to have to perform and play like that. If not, we're going to have to slide someone in there, right, of what our standard is and what we demand. So I try to train everybody the same, and I don't give a special treatment for any guy. Um, being a veteran or not, you're going to have to go through the work and grind, and if you're making mistakes, you ain't going to be the guy, right? So um, I know he sees himself that way, and I see him the same, but I also see Jawan, and I see where Amari's developing, and that's their goal is to everybody should want that ball when the game's on the line coming your way from 12. With Amari, where is he better from last year? I mean, he didn't play, which is not his fault, obviously, with Randall here. But yeah. where, where did he make some strides, even though he didn't get on the field too much? Yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't give, like, Amari the out that Amari was here because it's your job to beat Randall out or to beat our Z out, right? And even though he plays slot, like, I got him working in at Z, and he's done that before, right? His performance just wasn't on their level, and that's the reality of it, right? It wasn't that he was bad, but he wasn't doing the high-level things that Randall was doing or at Z, Lazard, right? Um, so right now, uh, biggest thing we worked on, I talked to him in the off season, is just how do you get your confidence? Well, you know, you work and train harder than you ever did. So if you were to see him right now, he's already going to look faster and look stronger than he ever did. You know, um, he's in the best shape of his life. His mindset is like just I'm, I'm going to be the, you know, the number one guy at all three positions. So he has that going for him. His route running is already cleaner and crisper. Um, he's trained in an entire off season, and um, some of these guys know. And Amari talked to him about it is you know you're on the college tour after the season, right? You don't you play all the way through January. You go on a college tour, and then you show up in an NFL building, and, and you might not have trained the way that you should have, you know, or what you you know originally maybe did in college. So sometimes the guys come in and they're just not ready for the speed of the game, or maybe they're just not ready at the physical peak that they need to be at to perform. Like I said before, Sammy came in and started week one and put up big numbers, but there's a lot of guys who it, it, maybe it's halfway through the season, maybe it's after two games where they just start to feel the offense and peak and it just starts to click. And, and ultimately, to play this position, you know, uh, you have to have confidence. You have to, you know, and you have to understand how you're trying to work a guy. And, you know, if you don't have that confidence out there, the true confidence, not like, hey, I'm the man, it has to be a true confidence that is built through practice and habits. And when you have that, you know, and you can go out there and play and do all the things that they're, you know, God given, then, then you can perform at a high level. And I feel like he's taking those steps right now. I feel really good about Amari. And um, Kabi bumped me the other day and was like, yo, you can feel it from him, you know? And I was, I just smiled. I'm like, hey, it's just a start right now. We'll see where it's at when the pads come on and the, the lights are on, you know? So what do you want to see from the guy, the three drafted guys in particular, from what was presented, you know, a couple weekends ago, now taking it into the OTAs when some veterans are around? Yep. So they came in the room and, um, you know, there's a standard we have, man, and it's the way we finish and it's the way we compete. And those are things that are, are, they can't even decide. Um, that's going to be enforced, right, and pushed on them. So they bought into that. They're, they're already training the way that they need to train, right? So they bought into that and they're like, they want to be great. So you can feel that from them, you know. Um, I think that you know, it was funny because the other night I'm getting a text from Romeo at like 11 o'clock at night. My phone keeps vibrating, but he's asking about plays. You know, they have this want to, you know, to them. And uh, I can feel it right now. They want to know the playbook inside out. They want to be great. And those types of guys end up, you know, panning out in this league as opposed to just guys who show up and think that they've already arrived. So they got a chip on their shoulder. They're fired up, man. And I'm excited about them. You know, my wife, other than, you know, always saying, you know, who's calling you so late? What's going on? Like, I'm the State Farm guy. But other than that, they're, they're excited, man. They're eager. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a great group of young men that I think you guys, when you get to meet them and hang out with them, you're really going to, you know, see who these guys are. And they, they fit the Packer way, man. Time for one more. Was it a little challenging this offseason or maybe 
a little different, creating an effective and a new game plan in the, in the passing game without Tate being in the building and the offense? Yeah, there, there, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a challenge. It's just that, you know, our offense is kind of set, like what we believe in, right? And, and you know, Coach Steno hit on it before, right? We want to play fast. We want to be physical. And then the run's going to set up the pass, right? Um, and, and I talked to the guys. I said, look at all the balls that went to Tay. And I talked to him. I said, look at the opportunity that is ahead of you. 12 is a Hall of Famer. He's throwing the ball to somebody, right? Who's going to take that number one spot that we were just talking about? Right, because we play three guys a lot of times in 11. There's three number one spots, so who's going to take it, right? So to me, it's, it's going to be very similar. Now, there might be a play that we designed for 17 through time that it took for him to build and, you know, craft a certain route. But for the most part, I mean, you know, we study in the offseason. We always try to stay ahead of the curve and get better. But, I mean, in the end, it's football is football. It's winning a one-on-one, -on -one, you know. So can Christian win a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, week one when we're going up to Minnesota versus Patrick Peterson? That's on him and me to get better, right? And then we got to instill the confidence. we got to get the job done at a high level, you know, hold the standard of our room and – Let's go find a way to get that Lombardi at the end.